everyone and welcome to our next talk. I'm really excited to introduce this next, the next group of speakers. Um, and yeah, I think without any further ado, I would like to welcome the Adidas team, Arnau, Pascal, Marius, Tra, and Robbie. Please, um, please come to stage. Hey, how's it going? guys hello hello how are you hey hey good How's good and, and so this is the adidas team i would like um i would let everyone introduce yourselves i think you'll do a much better job than i'm doing so uh yeah i'll leave it to you hello uh my name is arnau san juan i'm woodward design director in innovation in in our office in in new york and yeah, I'm really thrilled to be here with all of you guys. So uh, yeah, I pass it to Pascal. <laughs> Perfect. All right, uh, nice to meet everyone. My name is Pascal Scholz. I am a senior footwear designer at the New York Innovation Team. And it's a pleasure for me today to be part of this and to show you guys uh, our work we did together with uh, Gravity Sketch. And I'll pass it on to Marius. Hey, hey everyone. My my name is Marius Jung. I'm also based in New York. I'm a senior footwear designer here in the innovation team for Adidas. Um, I am really happy to be here today. I think over the last one and a half years, the tool or the things that we're going to show today, they changed our, our life in a specific way. So just happy to be here with the team and share our experience. And maybe Robbie, if you want to be next. Thanks, Marius. Yeah, I'm um, I'm Robbie. I've been with the Adidas Innovation Team, designing with these talented guys for uh, about two years now, and I've been using Gravity Sketch I think since it came out almost five years ago. So, um, we're working hard helping these guys in the 3D side of things, design, and um, yeah, happy to be here today. Straw, what's up? Hey, hey. Uh, hey everyone, happy to be here. I'm Strahinja Spasic, I'm from Serbia. Uh, I joined Adidas like two and a half years ago and I'm also based in New York in our Adidas Innovation Center here. And I'm just uh, happy to have this opportunity to share what we did in the past year and a half uh, with Gravity Sketch as a team. So looking forward to, to sharing that with everyone here. Awesome, great. Well, thank you so much, guys, for, for being here. I think this is going to be a real treat to, to have this presentation. There is something special about this presentation, which is that it's not actually going to be a screen share that like, we're all used on having uh, now through Zoom. We're going to be presenting directly, or the team is going to actually be presenting directly from within Gravity Sketch using the collab feature. So we're going to be jumping in there. Everybody is going to be wearing their headsets. And for this, we are going to ask everyone to jump into YouTube. So we're going to be sharing. Darren is going to help us um, post uh, the link to the YouTube channel so that we actually uh, can see the stream over there. And so, uh, yeah, meet you, meet all of you over there so that we can start the presentation. All right, so for everyone that is watching, I'll just uh, remember, like remind everyone, we are inside of Gravity Sketch, inside of CoLab. The team um, at Adidas has prepared this, uh, they have prepared this presentation within, within Gravity Sketch and they have created the entire presentation space. Um, and so everything that you're seeing is basically from my point of view, they're like presenting towards my face essentially. So here are my hands. Um, and there's Pascal over there waving. And so, um, yeah, just wanted you to know exactly what, what you're actually seeing. So without any further ado, um, I'll, I'll, I'll leave it to you, Pascal. All right, thanks, Daniela. I uh, hope everyone can uh, hear me now. Um, I would love to introduce you today to our future natural creation space. We uh, designed together with Gravity Sketch. and. Before we really dive into the actual uh, creation steps we were taking, 
I would love to like just introduce you to the concept of Future Natural. And what we were looking into was actually a shoe that is truly designed around the human body and allows athletes for most natural movement without any restrictions. So in other words, the most adaptive shoe ever made, right? Like adaptive to the foot, adaptive to movement, adaptive to different environments, etc. And we knew to get there, we needed to start with the base, which is actually the human foot. So we scanned it, we copied it, we studied it, and we realized that we really needed something that would allow us to truly work around the anatomies, right? Like a tool that would allow us a 360 perspective on, on what we're designing here. So that's when we started to look into Gravity Sketch and to create in Gravity Sketch. And it allowed us to take those perspectives, but also it allowed us to really question this classic way of, you know, like having a midsole, having an outsole, having an upper, and truly make everything like one system. Everything grows together. And today we know you guys most likely already were in touch with this tool. You know a lot about Gravity Sketch. You know, maybe you already tried it yourself. So don't see this as a tutorial in general. We just want to really like let you uh, show you guys how we operate in footwear design and how this can provide a new perspective on our process. And uh, with that said, I would like to hand it over to Robbie, who is already waiting with the next and the first station. Talk later. Thanks, Pascal. <clears throat> Hi, Daniela. Welcome to the second room. Um, as Pascal said, we're, we're starting with the foot. You know, designing for something like Future Natural, we're really trying to break away from convention, and in doing so, we're using the human form as a last. And with designing complex human forms, uh, you need complex human expression which is why we're using 3D sketching. So usually when we work, we're working a lot in 2D, extrapolating 2D lines from a lateral view. But in 3D sketching, we can suddenly break free from that and, and start to really articulate um, comprehensive lines instead of just extrapol extrapolating. For instance, if we take a look at this foot and look at a lateral view, we can draw a line like this, goes around here, close your system. So that's a line that could be represented on a lateral view, but then suddenly becomes so much more super quickly. So if you come over here, we have a shelf of iterations where you can see how we can start to just simply draw over the foot and kind of use some of those human forms and anatomical structure to mimic that and enhance that and really allow the foot to work like a foot. Here you can see some interesting kind of underfoot ideations, all kind of enhancing the natural anatomy of what's going on, kind of accentuated fat pads, um, not a lot happening, sculpted arches. Um, and, and really quickly, you can get a lot of iter different iterations. Now, if you look to your left, you can see how far you can truly go with one of these. And even if I take the foot out at this point, you can see how close we get to a, a final, finalized 3D line work. And you can see in here, we're really articulating different areas, different areas of, of where we need different kinds of pressure and how we can start to blend in a 360 way using these new technologies in Future Natural to help design and break away from that conventional way of building. Also in Gravity Sketch, it's super easy to just take one of these iterations and, and such an early stage be, be discussing so such complex details within the form. Um, so at this part of the process, like you, you designed enough around the foot, we've created something that reflects the foot, but we need to flesh it out and bring it to the next stage. So um, with that, um, we're going to take this line out. We're going to bring it over to the next room where Pascal and I will help surface it up.
just all right give thanks me robbie one second i realized that i haven't put smooth cat cam on all right this should make the view even better cool already in the sky all right thanks robbie so uh welcome to the to the second stage and uh, we want to introduce you here to this next step in the process which is about like surfacing and creating volumes and there are actually like two ways to tackle it and the first one we want to actually show to you guys is this one so having the line art uh, just done in the previous station as a base now there's a tool as you, you guys might know where we can just like connect the lines and create uh, surfaces and what you see behind me is actually Robbie already looking into this and for us we figured out like for footwear for organic organic forms a lot of like asymmetries this is actually a pretty good one right this is one that really allows us to to create a certain complexity in shapes that helps us to especially talking here about future natural and mimicking the the anatomy of the human body like this was really a tool that would allow us to do this and like to to create in that in that space um yeah i feel like yeah robbie showed pretty well right also how quick this is and how quick this this shows up as like a full full shoe um at the same time we also want to show you um option two which is kind of like just starting from a volume what you see here is a cube and what we want to do is actually just taking this cube and quickly show you how how fast it actually is. There we go. One second. We're going to make a new one. There we go. This color. So starting from a cube, and what you what you see here is pretty much it's very easy to add subdivisions to a cube, right? So that's a tool we would use a lot, kind of just like starting quickly to mock this thing up. I mean, you guys can see this is like pretty raw, pretty quick, um, but it fully would allow us to very quickly like generate a certain shape that is already kind of foot like um, and once we have the overall construction there's you know the subdivision level right we can add and obviously this looks like very junky you now but you can see how fast it is right like to just create a certain a certain volume organic volume so like the exploration you guys see behind me was pretty much done this way so just like fully starting from a cube, building from a cube, and then like extending, uh, extruding, uh, adding surfaces, etc., to to create those kind of shapes. So again, another fast way to ideate. And I think yeah, I think Robbie, we we cover the station, right? I feel like most of the, the insights are are set. So with this, we would hand it over to the next station where it's around detailing. Sounds good. Right, I'm just giving the audience a little bit of a tour of this space before I, before I move forward, because it's quite amazing. All right. Let's head over to that side. Hey, Stra. Hey, <laughs> hey, Daniela. Welcome. Uh, so you had the chance to see uh, what we did in a line art stage and also in the surfacing where we talk uh, about forms and shapes and how do we take that further exploring in a different way because this tool really allows us to like look things differently from different perspectives but uh, here when we ha we are satisfied with where we are with shapes and everything this is the kind of the part of the process where like we start thinking about details and like implementing different things uh, onto our shoes uh, stuff like laces, lace loops, pull tabs, and uh, maybe I can show you just quickly like how easy actually it is to iterate uh, just quickly a simple pull tab and uh,
just to get a different perspective on things and like how you could start implementing different details uh, into into uh, the whole design and creative process. Um, in this stage also, we're going to talk about communication and how we start collaborating with uh, the the different parts of our team and like different teams and group, groups of people. And for that, I'm going to pass it over to Robbie where he can explain a little bit more how we do things there. Thanks, Straw. Hi again. Um, yeah, so just as Straw said, like, this is when, once we create surfaces and details on a shoe, we're doing this at a very early stage. We're basically taking almost the napkin sketches and fleshing them out almost entirely before we have a sample made. And we're doing it in this room that is super collaborative where you and I can even talk to each other even though we're not even in the same country. And that's exactly what we've been doing at Adidas for the past year and a half, is we will take a shoe and we will explode it. The scene that you're looking at right now is a similar scene that happens where we invite people to the coast base and we start specking out every single detail of the shoe. And as you can see, we, you can swim in, entirely around the shoe. We can blow it up to the size of a warehouse um, and and really do a full x-ray deep dive on every different part. And you, you don't just have to be a designer. We can invite developers in at this stage to really be collaborative and, and help us make those design decisions. And even go as far as before we even touch Illustrator, make a virtual tech pack. Spec out the welding, the laces, lace loops, different branding ideas and tooling ideas. Even take notes and kind of confirm a lot of these design decisions with our marketing development partners before the shoe even is made. Yeah. And um, with that, I think we can pass it on to the final stage. I mean, once you discuss all these details and to get to a point of development where you're ready to visualize the product, Gravity Sketch doesn't really stop there. We can export the object into the computer and use this as presentation content and other things. And I will give you Marius in this other room to talk about that. Hey, hey, what's up? Hey, Marius. Thank you, Robbie. Thank you, Strahinia, for the introduction to this station. Um, personally, I'm quite excited about this station overall because as designers, you will see this is as well a point here where a bit of additional magic will happen. And as Robbie and Strahinia and the team mentioned, you know, after the journey of coming from a line art to like a surface model into detailing we kind of find ourselves at the stage having a refined model in 3d in the space but as robbie as well has mentioned like this is not where it stops for us so at this point we take for example a 3d object like this export it and bring it into like additional software in order to bring it to the final final touches the final feel that we want to create and robbie with that maybe if you could turn on the hidden layer, I could show a bit more specific on what that could mean. So you see here, for example, that shoe that I showed you, the Fuji Natural shoe in 3D, and on the right of me, you'll see a render, for example. This render, for example, we use uh, tools like Keyshot, um, we use tools like um, uh, Substance Painter in order to really create like a good feeling about material, a good feeling about light and shadow to make it as realistic as possible. And this helps us ultimately in our communication, if that's, for example, with teams that we work in, in presentations, if that's the community, uh, like the communication with the factory. Overall, just a really amazing tool for us to really bring our concepts to another level. And I mean, as Maybe some of you know, you know, the, the footwear industry is still quite heavy on Photoshop and Illustrator. So we would spend like hours on, you know, creating like the right shadows, the right highlights and all of this. And I think with this, this process here introduced, 
we are able to kind of speed up that a bit and really like dial into like the absolute detailing that we would never be able to achieve if we would spend that time in Photoshop and in Illustrator. And if you want to have a look at the, at the left here, um, you know, it's also an amazing way for us to simulate color in a really quick way. We can just like by drag and drop in Keyshot, for example, we can like see how a color, a specific color would affect like a whole, uh, a whole shoe, re shoe really quick. And this is the way we operate now, like bringing 3Ds into the software and really quick uh, try, try certain kind of color and light schemes out in order to create the overall atmosphere and to find the right, um, the right feeling of the, of the shoe or the concept that we create. Here you see, for example, the plain white shoe just by adding a different kind of set of light, the, the blue compared to the red, it gives the shoe a different kind of attitude and a feel. And maybe if we follow here to, to the bit more, the detailing of, of, of that, that yeah, software and the detailing that we can get to, I think what's important to mention here is that the things that we create here in Gravity Sketch, we can communicate with that with the factory. And the factory gets an idea about our 3D creation. They create something and can bring it back. And this is something, for example, here, what you see here, that's a tooling that we got from the, from the factory. And we're able to implement that back into um, Gravity Sketch in order to draw up in order to construct an upper. And what you see here is the whole upper, the whole material, all of those details, they are created in, in Gravity Sketch in order to kind of simulate the material. This is something that also we just wanted to show um, to see how specific you can get and how you can even simulate materials within the program without even tools like Substance Painter and Keyshot, just purely by, by building those small details into Gravity Sketch. And you see it here on the left, this is kind of the kind of concept um, that's shown on the right, just like then added with, with shadow, with light, and bringing it to a real, uh, real space. So overall, I think incredible for us, if we look at that, you know, that we have the ability to bring those kind of 3D objects into additional software that helps us to almost like create a real feel of a, of a shoe, of a concept, without even having it as a real thing in front of us. Really amazing to communicate on, a, on another level. And I think with that, these are some of the exciting things that we're excited about, how we can increase the level of communication, detailing, uh, lighting, and overall for the concept to communicate at its best. And with that, I would like to um, uh, allow you, Daniela, to move into the next station where you will see our team lead are now um, finalizing our presentation. Great. Thanks, Marius. Hello, hello. Hi, everyone. I hope you, you can hear me. So yeah, welcome to the, the final station here that is a, a summary of a little bit what we went through in the last uh, 12 to 18 months within the, the future natural world. And I, I hope that it reflects, it gives you an idea, an accelerated idea of, of how we we work uh, on those projects, right? I think how, how Pascal started, right? with the anatomy of the foot and how we took in consideration you know, how to design around the foot in a 360 degree way that actually that this tool actually allows us to design in a different way uh, to the line work, right? I think something really powerful that, that we found here and Robbie was, was touching there, right? It's like how we can connect you know, the bottom unit with an upper in a seamless way, right? That it's part of the same design. Uh, some of uh, the team was mentioning, right? We used to to work in a in a 2D platform, right? Mainly, right? How we connect the bottom with the lateral, with the top view, right? Here, it really allow us to really design in a in as I was saying in a in a 360 form. From that side of it, right? And in line work, right? We start to surfacing and really experiment with those volumes, right? To see how how everything uh, connects together here as well as the surfacing, right? I mean, how the light reflects, how, how those volumes, how those uh, skeleton that we create, you know, start to take to take shape. Uh, Straw was mentioning with Robbie, right? How how we communicate with our partners, right? If it's uh, from the development side that it's helping us to communicate with the factory, 
with our marketing counterparts, with uh, uh, our partners on athlete services, for example, like how we can start to explain some of the elements, some of the detailing that we have on, on the shoe. And quickly, we can ideate you know, 10, 15, 20 quick ideation and really easy to communicate with our with our counterparts. So I think it, that's, it's been really, really helpful, not only for us, it's also for, for the other rest of the people that works works in, in our process, right? Uh, and how Marius was touching at the end, right? So I think once we have the final model, right? Where, where everything is flashing out, right? The different ways that we can add detailing, if it's in terms of material, in terms of you not know, representation, to explain better our concept, and to add texturing, for example, right? So I think that gives a great overview of, again, what we went through uh, on the last yeah, 18 months. And and with that said, I think some of the key takeaways, right? I think it's you not know, the collaboration between the different partners within our creation process, the collaboration within us as a design team, especially in the, in the last 18 months, right? Where everyone was working from home in different locations, right? From New York to Portland, Portland to Germany, right? That really allow us to still keep pushing each other and really having a space where we can share, communicate and co-create. So that's been really, really powerful for us. And and again, Future Natural, it's a range of products that we, we created, but here I want to show you some of the the main projects that already hit the market. So I think Robbie, if you can help me to pull those up for the audience to see. So what you see on the left side, if I start on the left side with the human race Ikuna uh, concept there, I mean, you can see the similarities now from our process, how we start with the food, how we connect food and upper, you know, that seamless transition with the 360 approach and some of the examples, right, that we're showing here, right? Uh, on the center, you, we can see a kind of an early prototype that, that the team Pascal was leading there, also on how we were integrating, right? tooling, bottom unique, and upper in, in, a, in a seamless way, as well as on the right side. I think here it's, it's a more, yeah, it's a running a concept, right, that you can see, right? I mean, from the future natural family, you know, how we find similarities, not all of them are 100% the same, but you can see the language that it's carrying through. Uh, and thanks to that process, really, again, allow us, right, to, to create in a, in a seamless, in a 360 form, right? So I think it's really really helping us uh, and and it's a, a big group of people as I was saying right I mean uh, that uh, work in this project right from marketers developers uh, concept excellent sports science uh, factories so I think uh, it's been it's been really rewarding for for all of us and and I just want I mean as we're here as a, mo as a small representation of this team right I want to to bring all the team on stage here and just yeah say thank you to everyone to for participating, right? So I think from Pascal kicking off uh, the Future Natural World experience uh, to Robbie, hey Robbie, uh, to Strahinja and and to Marius for you not know, taking part and and really you know, making that process really easy through through the way. And I think yeah, hopefully everyone that is watching you now has a, a better understanding of of where Future Natural stands for for Adidas and how we let uh, in this space with the help of gravity sketch and, and the new tools um so so yeah i think with that said yeah i will hand it over to pascal again to to close it up thanks Arnaud. now um all right guys yeah follow me i think we it's time now to kind of leave this uh creation space here and while we're doing that, I really hope you guys had a pleasant journey with us. I hope it was clear that this was not just about creating a product, but creating a whole environment, right? Like, I mean, I'm sure a lot of you, like, especially when you work in a creative environment, you know those kind of places where you have, you know, you have like all your, you know, your mood boards, everything on the board, everything is around you to inspire you. and create those sparks and what we did here was truly doing this right to kind of like create a 
a virtual space for us to design in, to design the actual product. And I also hope it was clear like how much this helped us like for collaboration. Uh, going through a pandemic of almost two years and as, as Marius was saying, having like um, locations in different countries, this was really helpful for us to kind of like, you know, um, create and keep the creativity and the spirit up. And last but not least, I hope you guys could see how this is a fun thing to do, right? Like this is about, it's a fun, intuitive, playful way to create, you know, serious products. So we really appreciated it. I hope you too. And see you in a second on screen. Thanks to you. Thank you guys. All right. So now we'll, we'll jump into our cameras for you guys to see our beautiful faces without the headsets. So um, it's pretty, I guess, pretty simple one right off the bat. How many hours do you guys work in GS per day? <laughs> Yeah, maybe I can take that on and I can pass it, I mean, to the team for, for a better understanding. But I think it depends. I think we don't have, let's say, a range of hours, right? That we would say, no, five, eight, right? I think it depends on the on the stage of the project, right, that you are. I think, you no, know, we, we really balance, I, I have to say, at least. I mean, if I uh, talk from my personal experience, right, I think maybe, yeah, you could spend one hour, one hour and a half, you know, I mean, you take a break and then you come back, you know. Um, but I think something really powerful, right? As we were saying, like that we meet as a team in in this co-creation space, right? And then it, where we can share, right? And it's maybe not just creating; it's just kind of sharing between between us. But I think some of the people in the team spend more hours than others. So I think, yeah, uh, if if we have time, I think I would like to pass it, yeah, let's say to to Pascal, uh, and then we we can follow a little bit. I think everyone has slightly different experience there yeah no definitely i mean i feel like you know i can just highlight what you were saying and i feel like it has a lot to do on on where i where i am in my process in my creation process so let's say right now i would say gravity sketch for me is a tool more in early stages of a creation process where i can be like uh let's say still fairly free and uh, uh very creative and uh, the more it goes into, let's say, uh, you know, factory communication, etc., it's again what we show today. We see a big potential there. But right now, I would say it's still like a time where I use it less. Um, I don't know. What do you think, uh, uh, Stra? How, how do you use it? Yeah, definitely. I agree. Just to to add on top of what you uh, and are now said. I think especially in the in the early stages of the of the process, I think me personally intend to use it much more as it kind of brings something different to 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 you because you you kind of unlock the 360 perspective of it, you know, and now you don't have any more the lateral or medial side or top down view. You have everything in one software and you can look at the shoe uh, from all the different uh, sides, right? Um, when it comes to like tech packs and like collaborating with factory, uh, I'm trying to like, I think all of us as, as you had the chance to see to implement it more and more. And if there is like some really complex uh, injection part that we're trying to explain and like with cross sections is maybe uh, tricky. Uh, we're trying to maybe sketch it out quickly in gravity sketch so they can have a better perspective of like how we would like for that component to look like. And uh, I think the third stage in a way for me where I start picking it up again is like maybe when, when, when we head towards like a bigger presentations and when we really want to use a tool in a showing off kind of a, a perspective where you can really spend time into details and like really export the file uh, to Keyshot or to Substance Painter as Marius was mentioning and really step it up there when it comes to rendering and like really showcasing the, the idea behind. So, yeah. I think if I, if, um, if I can jump in here, I think it's, uh, it's really, uh, it really became a daily tool almost like, especially in, in my process. And I have to say like, and a couple of the team members touched on it, I think it's really important instead of like how much time to talk about when when to use it. And I think for our team, I've really felt that 
the best moments we had in there were the moments where we may be like starting a certain topic or stuck on a topic just to change environment completely and come together and really look at things yeah just a different perspective and really quickly you get a, like almost like a boost of like new creative energy in this kind of room and, and you have like you open the work stream again fully and have like so many different options that you can discuss and i think that helped us uh, over the last one and a half years just to have variations and be, be really critical with what we do and look at different things so i think when is a really important time when to use it and if you find the right the, the right timing for that it can be extremely powerful awesome you, um you said something like some uh, really interesting things here I think um, a lot of people think about Gravity Sketch as a tool for making, like for 3D digitally creating something. And there's, there's this other aspect that we don't speak too much about, uh, which is the aspect of just really like just using it as a tool to communicate. Um, and that's kind of like the most important part for, that I take from your presentation, which has allowed you guys to have those conversations, even bring them to the early stages of the creation process where maybe before when you had to like, you know, speak with the developers or other partners, you had to be a bit further down the line in the design process because otherwise you couldn't really communicate it. Is that, is that true or, or not? <laughs> Am I making things up? Definitely. No, I feel like definitely. I can also speak to that a little bit from like before I joined Adidas, I was more in a transportation environment as a designer and like there it's very common to sketch you know like like 2d sketch it, sketches but kind of sketch perspectives that's a big thing and like joining footwear industry it's like very common here to have like a 2d sidewalk like a side view sketch right which is like uh, just like shows a part of what the design is and to your point like it's really like you know again having like from an early stage on the product in a 3d really helps with communication to everyone to even for yourself right to understand where you want to head for all partners in a in a process it's like especially some you know some that maybe don't have the imagination that let's say maybe creators have by nature right like to to imagine what this could be it, it really helps to have it already in a 3d in front of you you can turn it you can twist it and, and show it to people so yeah it's definitely the case just to add something also quickly here, Pascal. Uh, also, I think it really allowed us, right? I think we, we experienced the last 18 months a really a special situation, right? That it, it, it was challenging all of us, right? I think not being able to go to the office, for example, right? But still, we, we, we need to keep, keep pushing, keep working, right? So I think this tool also, it really allowed us, right? To, to communicate now with our counterparts, right? I mean, we couldn't go to the maker lab and maybe or do some prototypes in hand, right? Because we couldn't go to the office, but here it really allow us to still create and still being able to, to share with, let's say, as I was saying before, with our marketers, with our developers, right? To still explain, right? In a, in a fully, not 3D model, right? That it's easy to understand that more than it, in a 2D, right? I think that really helped us, I have to say, right? I think still we we created i think mario said at some point right we created our digital maker lab right so somehow we really quickly adapted right to this new tool and we didn't get slower actually we we got faster a little bit right trying you no know, explain certain problems that before it was maybe try to explain that to the form sometimes so yeah just just to at this point here and it's also i think it's also really interesting like for me personally, like I'm someone I'm not like sketching on a 2D is not my my absolute strength, I would say. Oh, so I've always been someone who's working in the workshop, figuring things out in 3D with my hands and materials. And when, you know, when the pandemic hit and these things weren't accessible anymore, like gravity sketch was an amazing tool for me personally to still be like a modeler in 3D and kind of replace that in a way. And that was really interesting for me because I, I, I found in that, okay, I can actually work in 3D and I still can re replace those kind of things that I've, you know, transitioned from the real space in the studio into a virtual world. And it's kind of similar, they go hand in hand in a way. So I think adding to your point and now with like having, having access to something like that again, 3D creation also for all of us, I think really, really important as we work in that, in that 
material world so so closely. Darren, any more questions from the audience? I can see a lot sure. of them coming through. Yeah, if we have time, uh, if we have, I, I can shoot another question over. Um, so another another one that we got was how often is gravity sketch used internally to actually communicate with people outside of the design department? Uh, I can jump quickly here. I think uh, as we were we were mentioning a little bit, right? I think we, we were leading in terms of gravity sketch, how how we work with the tool and how we introduce the tool to the other counterparts, as I was saying, yeah, development, marketing, uh, uh, athlete science, right? I think, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that Robbie maybe can expand here uh, because not everyone needs to have a headset, for example, right? I think some people also, j just to put it in perspective, right? I think maybe, from the design team, we were the ones that we have the headset, but we can use tools and share the content via, let's say, sharing screens, you know, browser. I think maybe Robbie, maybe you can expand a little bit how how we've been communicating also with with let's say internal parts of the business, right? That it's not just only design. Thanks, Anna. Um, yeah, I mean, to the, to answer the question, how much is it actually used to communicate outside of design, like all the time? I, I, Every day, every single tech pack that we have done has been handed over now with some sort of supplemental 3D visuals. Because I mean, even, even if it's not at a tech pack level, if we're just talking to the developers of how we're going to stack a foam uh, TPU plate, foam uh, material layering system, but they don't all stack on top of each other in the same place, the only way to actually articulate something like that is to make a 3D mock-up or have a perspective drawer sit there for the whole day and render something out so you can talk to development about how you want to work these layers. Or it could be a, a really bad napkin sketch, which happens in the industry a lot, where some dude sitting there and he's like has a triangle above another triangle and they're like, okay, so this is this. But now, I mean, with Gravity Sketch, we're we're able to kind of like mock up those components and layer them on top of each other for complex constructions all the time. So I think that's what these guys talk about a lot. Like when you say it's really good at the beginning of a project, I think it is really good because you get the schematic down very quickly. And then from there, from details and, and pushing it further, I think the communication really can go almost all the way to the factory, almost nearly to manufacturing at this point and we're just keep keep pushing pushing on on that end of things there's one really yeah, really, so really a good lot. question oh yeah sorry Ravi. Um, no i was just gonna say a lot so a lot yeah. i would say there's one interesting question here which is adidas being a big enterprise how has how was the initial pitch of Gravity Sketch when it was first brought? Some still think it's a gimmick and don't see the potential. Was it something you had demos, something you pitched as a let's try and see, or something that just naturally came on board and got adopted? Um, yeah, I don't know. No, maybe I, ju I just touch quickly and then I, I pass it to you. I think, uh, again, I think, we're we're at the forefront also i think in terms of no industry also always looking into let's say new technologies right what what can help us into you no know, evolving our process and how you know how we can integrate potential new tools that it can you know amplify our work in different ways right same as you know as marius was saying before we've been using let's say photoshop uh, illustrator during the last you know 10 years right and and we didn't make a massive step, right? Since 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 then, right? So, I think yeah, to give props to Robin, I think maybe you know how how you came into into our team introducing that tool, right? And and I can imagine from your experience now you can explain a bit. No, some people were more receptive at the beginning, right? When something comes new, some people you know really grabs them and 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 tries to kick things off. Some people are a little bit more hesitant, but yeah, maybe Robbie. Probably you have yeah great great examples here. Yeah, I I think 
what what's really important to like realize is like yes it, it can be gimmicky yes it can be um just used as the loose tool to make loose visuals and it's not and it's not an engineering tool to make molds it's just not um but a lot of people think that it's supposed to be and a lot of people think that it like that it's supposed to replace what they're doing and i would say that like creating results and just letting the results speak for themselves has been the best thing that I've been able to do. Like when, when I started at Adidas and they were used to kind of this 21 day turnaround of getting a 3D model before they can even look at it and spin it around in Rhino to then suddenly showing up at nine in the morning and by 3 p.m. have like a mock-up that they can see everything of. And oh, I actually, let's, let's switch the layering here. And like, it was, it, I think it demonstrated its value quite quickly. Um, but, you know, I think that the more skill and, and because of that, because it demonstrated its value, suddenly it wasn't just, oh, I'm hired on to do the 3D stuff as usual 3D um, laborers in the industry work. It's like, oh, you send that to the 3D guy, suddenly are now straw. Marius, Pascal, they, they all wanted to try it. And because the learning curve was so easy, um, I don't know, it kind of spread like, like wildfire, putting 3D into anyone's hands who wanted it. And as a, as a team, I think we had as well, like a couple of months ago, we had a really great opportunity in order to present our, our workflow to the wider design community in our brand. And I think for us, you know, we've maybe been been working in the in the cave <laughs> for a bit on that and really like, you know, putting ourselves on a different level and really trying to push. But I think it was a good reality check for us when we presented what we've done and the feedback that we've gotten. A lot of teams have reached out. A lot of individuals have reached out, not only to us, but also I know like to, to your team as well, because I think ultimately we introduced as well uh, another variation for the design process or additional tool to bring in to like you know refresh the process especially in a in a big brand like adidas it's important to to have those injections of new creativity new processes in order to look at things in a different way so i think as a team that was the moment where we were all like oh wow like the things that we're doing here right now they're having an effect on a, on a large scale and that was to that question was really positive uh, received Great. I mean, I think there's there's this element of like you starting to adopt Gravity Sketch for your workflow, but I think there's this massive element of you bringing 3D in general as a tool to advance your design, right? And I think we could have, you know, like two more hours talking about that because I think there's still a lot to, to like unpack there. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to do it at some other time. I'll just leave um, with one comment. For you guys, it says, thanks so much for this. I have been a fan of Adidas for most of my life. To meet the team like this is very exciting. And with this, we finish. Uh, thank you so much, guys, for, for giving us your time and such an inspiring uh, presentation. Thank you for having us also here. I think it's a great opportunity to share with the larger community. So yeah, thanks a lot. All right. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, thank, thank you, you everyone. Daniela. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone.